Before we start this video, I'm going to throw out a little disclaimer. I do not promote gold farming or gold selling or selling of old school RuneScape accounts. I personally bought in RuneScape and code in AHK because it's fun, it's interesting, and figuring out how to do certain things and overcome obstacles uh, through botting is, is just really fun for me. This video, we're gonna cover the basics of how I do things, what softwares I use uh, to get started. And realistically, if you wanted to just watch this video, I should be able to give you all the foundation you need to figure the rest out on your own. So let's go ahead and jump into the softwares that I use. Okay, so for coding HK, I use HK Studio. I know you can use different programs this is the one that i have found that works really well and it's just a preference kind of thing there there are other things that you can use like visual studios is also very popular for people that code in um, python and then within ahk uh, there is windows spy so whenever you download ahk you will just have this by default this is this is pretty helpful mostly for the mouse position section within here to get specific coordinates and the clients if I wanted to get, say, the color of this indicator right here, I would hover over it. It tells me the uh, client and window location, as well as the color code in RGB for it. And that leads into Pullover's Macro Creator. This is what I use for the majority of finding the locations on the screen. I'll put a link to all these programs down below. Um, if I'm not too lazy to do that. Once you download it, you go into commands and really the one that I use pretty much exclusively is the, the image slash pixel search slash image to text. This is the most helpful thing. It saves so much time from writing pixel search over and over again. And you can get specific regions without having to find the different coordinates on the screen using uh, Windows Spy, which is how we used to do it. So before I would just um, like pick a certain spot here, that would be your X1, Y1, and then I would just, you know, make a box. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with this because it's much easier. So in the region section, you'll click on these three dots. It'll give you a little tooltip explaining how it works. Um, so you'll use your right click to map out the first coordinate and then you'll drag it out to make a box. So say I wanted to do a pixel search in this area. I would do that. Okay, so it'll give each one of our coordinates on the screen. It'll give our X, X1, X2, Y1, Y2. And then we can define what our search is meant to be. So you can search for images. You can also search for pixels. Pixels are gonna be a little easier to do because you can search for a specific color in the screen, but there are some things that you can do an image search for that is equally as useful. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's, let's uh, just go through here. So we picked our color. We're looking for this specific red color here. We've got our box that we're looking for it in. And then in our variables here, this is going to be the output location of where it found the color red. So within this param within these parameters in the region, it's searching for this pixel color. And once it finds this pixel color, it's going to output within these variables of found X and found Y. We can also change the names of these two. So say we're looking for this tree right here. So let's change this variable to tree x and then tree y now once it finds this red color within this region it will output the location as tree x and tree y which we can later use to move our mouse for instance over to the location of these variables and once we hit okay it'll give you the code and then all you have to do is copy this code over into whatever program you want to use and there you go you've got your pixel search i explained each one of these parts but this is how it's actually written in ahk uh, so you have your pixel search function 
your x and your y for your variables, the region, which is labeled right here as x1, y1, x2, y2. You got your color and this zero, which I didn't explain in pullovers. This is your variation. So what variation means is that since we're looking for this very specific color of red, right? If we put a zero here, it's going to look for only that very specific color and nothing else. So if there's another color on the screen that's kind of red, it doesn't care. It's only looking for that. So if we wanted to add a variance, we could uh, set this number a little higher. So maybe we'll look at 25 different variants close to this color red. And then if something looks about close to this color of red, it will grab that location and then put it within these variables of this X and Y. We'll go over uh, image search as well while we're here. It's basically all the same, except for um, pretty obviously it's gonna look for an image instead. We'll go back over to RuneScape here and um, we'll, we'll map out the sort of mini map area here, okay? And then we'll use the make a screenshot um, of the mini map. Let's pick the heart right here. So make a little image and it shows our little image right here. When you're specifically using image searches, it's gonna be in your best interest to add some sort of variation like I was just explaining because the color is just a little off. It's not going to find it. Adding uh, some variation to that image, to the, specifically the color, if you think of like uh, YOLO V5, if you know what that is, that's like a, an AI that can detect images. That's not what kind of variation it's looking for. It's looking for specifically colors. That's it. Something else in RuneScape while we're just covering this is that the mini map and the colors within the screen are going to gradually over time shift colors. So if you do a pixel search for a specific color on the screen, it's going to change throughout your, your session. It's not going to be reliable for you to search for a specific color with zero variation, if that's how you're going to do it. Most people who use AHK though use indicators. This little indicator right here is a plugin that I have installed. This is an idle indicator. This red box shows up when I am not doing anything. My character is idle. Okay, so now that we're lighting this log, you can see the box is gone. All right, I'm done lighting the log, the box, the box is now back. We can code that into our script to perform an action based on whether we are idle or not, which is very handy. Another one that we can do is marking trees. So uh, let's go over to my plugins and I'll show you uh, the ones that I use for trees, which is object markers. Over here is where we input the, um, the ID of said object. So. If you go into open OSRS, there's going to be this little cogwheel that says developer tools. Then the developer tools, you can select uh, game objects to grab the IDs of these trees. Um, and we can see that all the normal trees, excluding this dead tree over here, has the same ID of 9730. So we can go into here and enter 9730. And now each one of the trees you can see has a blue box. We can now create a pixel search that looks for the tree on the screen. So we'll go to pullovers, we'll do our region, go over to the clients, and we'll just do a basic uh, area of where a tree could possibly be on our screen. We want to look for a pixel because we've uh, set the specific color the trees we do not need to add a variation because these uh, indicators are never going to shift color that's exactly why we want to use a plugin to highlight the tree okay so we'll hit ok and then we have our code um, I also forgot to change the variables but we can do that in HK Studio here okay so we'll Change this back to tree x tree y. Okay. 
So now we have our pixel search. It's looking for a tree. And what this means right here is we've got our if, if statement. So if error level equals zero. So all error level equals zero means is if this pixel search can find this color in this region, then it will execute the code within this, uh, within these brackets here. Okay. And then if we put one, that means that if it cannot find this color within this region, it will perform the code within these brackets. Okay. So let's now do something based on finding the tree, right? Uh, so first of all, let's, let's just get it to tell us the location of the tree. So we can use a message box to output the variables X and Y. Okay. So now this will show us a message box on the screen. If it can find the tree, um, let's also assign it to a hotkey, which will do F1, F1. Okay, and then we always want to put return at the bottom of our hotkey, uh, whatever the bottom of the code is, because if we put a hotkey here, say for like F2, for example, and then put, you know, some sort of code down here, if we don't put return when we hit F1, it's going to it's going to keep executing all this code until it gets to the very end of the script, right? So all this return means is that once it reaches this point, it stops. It doesn't turn the, the script off. It just stops executing code until you press another hotkey to, to activate something else. Now that we've got that, let's run our script. So we have our script here. Um, we'll go ahead and start it. Okay, so make sure you're tabbed into the window here and then we'll press F1 to activate. Where we found the tree is X coordinate, Y coordinate, which should be in this general location. So we can use Windows Spy just to double check and make sure that, oh, maybe it's over. Okay, so I found this one first, which is correct. The way that pixel search works is that it's always going to search from top left to bottom right so it's gonna it's gonna be like reading a book so it'll go it'll search this line go down search this line and it'll keep going down so this one is the highest blue pixel that it can find it should be like a roughly around uh this corner right here which should be the coordinate that it gave us back over to our text box here so we can pair that I'm not going to get the uh, exact location. Oh, well, I did. We know that that is accurate. That is where the tree is. We can get into how to move our cursor over to it. So I use wind human mouse. So here's the main function right here is mouse move. Um, you give it an X and a Y coordinate, and then you give it a speed. Uh, the default speed is going to be 0.6. And then you can also define RD, which is relative, uh, which will perform a mouse movement relative to where the mouse is currently at on the screen. So now we want to perform a mouse movement, which will be the last thing that I cover in this video. And realistically, once you learn how to move the mouse and to search for uh, images and pixels on the screen, I mean, you're good to go. That's that's really the basics. You, you got it. Other than that, you want to add in some randomization and things like that. And I'll go into um, theories of how the, the anti-ban works and stuff like that in my later videos and really go in depth on how to avoid getting banned. So mouse movement. All right. So if we go over here, um, the main function is move mouse. So move mouse. And then it wants an X and a Y, which will be our tree coordinate that we that we got. 
and then our speed, which will be zero, six, which will just be the default speed. Okay, that's what we'll set it to. So it should look for the tree, which we already know that this is going to be, be the tree that it should go over towards, given our little message box that we just did. If we press F1 within RuneScape, it moves the mouse over to the tree. Next, we would want it to click on the tree uh, to perform the action. All you would have to do is perform a click. We do want to give it uh, some sort of delay between when it moves the mouse over to the tree and clicks, or you're going to get a ghost click, meaning that the game hasn't registered that the mouse is already in that location before you click. We're going to do a bit of a delay, and you always want to make your variables, especially when it's a delay, you want it to be randomized. Um, I personally use randomized weighted variables, meaning that it gives you a value that is on a bell curve. Because if you know anything about statistics, every sort of pattern related to a human is always on a bell curve. You can think about IQ, right? You've got the median IQ of 100, and the majority of people are going to fall within the median IQ of 100. And then you'll get your your people that uh, are of higher intelligence towards the end and the lower intelligence towards the other end. And those are going to be way less than the majority of people in towards the center, making it a bell-shaped curve. So 1,000 means a second, right? So if we do, uh, let's do half a second to a full second. It'll wait and then it'll click, okay? Um, we also, so that just sets the variable here. So it randomizes this variable out of 500 to 1,000, and it gives us that number. And then we want to perform a sleep action of this number that we just defined by the randomized variable. Okay. All right. And then if we reload... Also, let me just do this right quick, because I put this in all of my scripts. Uh, reload. Okay. So when I press F2 on the keyboard now, it will reload the script. So if I add something new and reload it, it will, it will know what I just put in the script. Now if we perform this action, it will move over to the tree, wait about a half a second or so, and it will begin chopping the tree. Um, since we're in Tutorial Island and... Oh, no, let us chop the tree. Good job. Okay, so that's going to conclude the first episode of this series. Um, I'm enc I encourage you guys to leave feedback in the comment section. Tell me what you want to see, what I should go over. You can leave a comment telling me you hate this and you don't want people to know any of this information. That's cool. Uh, I totally understand that you just don't want people botting. Anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.